Let's look at the type of evidence that you can submit with your asylum application. There are different types of evidence, and the first and most important piece of evidence is your own story, what we call a statement. We will look at the details of a statement in our next video. Other types of evidence are evidence from witnesses, evidence in the form of documents, independent experts, and objective evidence which is available on the public domain. You need to remember that if you do not have any type of evidence, you don't have to panic and you do not have to fabricate any evidence. It's important that you only submit what is true, but fake evidence is never a good idea. So let's look first at evidence from other people, your witnesses. You can have letters in support that can be provided by your partner if you have one, or an ex-partner, a lover, somebody who knows about your sexual orientation. It may be difficult to get letters from somebody that's no longer with you or even from a current partner, but it's worth asking because it's very, very important to have this type of evidence to prove that you are an um, LGBT person. What is important in this letter is that the letter should contain a proof of ID of the person who's writing the letter to make sure that we're not making up uh, any evidence. And it is also important that the letter describes how do you know each other at, and give details of your relationship or past relationship. If you don't have any type of evidence, do not worry. It's not necessary to submit evidence with your asylum application. Other evidence can be from friends. So again, you can have letters of support from friends, people you hang out with, and they will know about your sexual orientation. It may be that uh, you have family or other people that know you in your country of origin and not just in the UK, and they may be willing to provide a letter or an email in support. If you get any evidence from abroad in the form of a letter, it's important that you keep the envelope with you and you show it to your lawyer and then to the Home Office. Let's now look at documentary evidence. It may be that you have any paperwork in support of your claim, and this can be in a variety of forms. So we'll give you some examples. And again, don't worry if you don't have any documentary evidence or any type of evidence in support of your claim and never fake any evidence. You can submit photographs of yourself in the UK or with friends and going out together, etc. You can submit uh, screenshots of your WhatsApp conversation with a partner, for example, or with friends. You can also submit um, evidence of dating profiles. But again, if you don't have any of these, do not worry about it. It may be that you have any document from your country of origin showing that, for example, if you suffered because you've been attacked in your country and you were hospitalized, you may have hospital letters or maybe you have a medical condition. Here in the UK, you may have some medical records or it may be any other documentary evidence. For example, again, in your country of origin, you may be wanted by the police and so there is an arrest warrant. These are all examples of evidence that you might or might not have, but it's always important to remember never to fake any evidence. So if you don't have anything in support of your case, this is fine. Any evidence which is not in English must be translated. Another type of evidence is evidence from independent experts. This is something that you will generally discuss with your lawyer and independent experts are people that are able to support your case by providing independent evidence about specific circumstances. For example, if it's not easy to prove with the material available on the public domain that you would be at risk in your country, you may need to instruct a country expert who is an academic or professor or somebody who studied and knows a lot about your country and will be able to comment whether you, with your specific circumstances, would be at risk if you were sent back because of your sexual orientation or gender identity. Another independent expert could be um, a psychiatrist or a medical expert if you suffer from any condition or if you went through some trauma and you may want to um, put some evidence about your psychological situation and mental health issue. Another expert could be somebody that can verify if some documents that came from your country are genuine or not. The last type of evidence we can think of is evidence in the public domain. There will be a lot of objective reports about your country of origin that could prove that you may or may not be at risk because of your sexual orientation or gender identity. Do not assume that because something is in the public domain, the Home Office would know about it. It's up to you to provide this type of evidence. This evidence is usually available on the internet, but not everything has the same value. So you should select documents from reliable objective sources 
resources like NGOs, for example, or other organizations that produce every year this type of reports about your country of origin. And this evidence can be added to your case to support the fact that what you are saying is true and you would be at risk on return.